This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and the latest news from Alpena Community College with Dr. Olin Joynton. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is J.R. Rodriguez from Thunder Bay Theater. Good morning, J.R. Morning, Nancy. How you doing? I'm doing great and I'm so excited about <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar, as everyone is. It's quite a buzz. Um, we're pretty excited about it ourselves. Um, we, we've heard for a number of years how people want us to produce Jesus Christ Superstar. Well, it's finally here. Yay! Uh, we open on the 29th and we're pretty excited about it. We have, uh, we have a couple of churches that we're actually performing in. We're excited about that. And the thing that we're most excited about is that we have a full-fledged, fully stocked rock and roll band for Jesus Christ Superstar. You do, and yeah. it sounds like it's a wonderful band. It's some of uh, Alpina's finest musicians, and they've been working on this thing for uh, well, my buddy Chris Yashik, he's been working on it since November. Um, and we have Randy Bouchard, we have Connor Larkin, uh, Greg Adamus, and James Dows. And these guys come in, they go to work, and they sound fantastic. And don't be afraid of the noise because the sound is actually working really well. We don't have our sound system yet. Okay. We get our sound system in May, but Chris Yashik and Randy Bouchard have put together this. Uh, makeshift sound system that sounds fantastic and Ooh. you can hear everything everything's clear we're having microphones for the performers uh, it's going to be a rock concert with a great story and you have a rock and choreographer too oh uh, wait, wait i can't talk enough about laura Torres. she's she's great she and her incredible family they're all uh very supportive of the theater but with all the places I've worked, New York, Chicago, uh, North Carolina, Texas, Florida, she is one of, if not my favorite choreographer. Wow. She, she knows how to handle people. She under, understands their, uh, their abilities, and she specializes in showcasing their abilities. Mm. Laura's a fantastic choreographer. We're very lucky to have her at, at Thunder Bay Theater. Oh, we're going to see a clip, but not just this moment. Let's talk about the story of Jesus Christ Superstar and how you're going to present it on the stage. Well, when Weber originally did it, he was a very young man at the time. The first show that he wrote was Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And then, of course, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. He is very active in the Anglican Church, and he's a very religious man. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to modernize the story of the last seven days of Christ's life. Because in the late 50s and early 60s, the, the story became passe for young people. And Weber didn't want that. He's a devout Christian. So he writes the story of Jesus Christ Superstar. And it's not, the way he wrote it, it's not a bunch of togas and a bunch of columns and... Um, you know, these casks with these little wooden uh, things that you hold wine in. That's not what he was after. What he was after was modernizing the story and bringing it to a younger crowd. Fortunately, what happened is it took off not only with the younger crowd, but with the older crowd because of the sensational music. And um, where it starts... It starts with Judas questioning himself okay. and questioning what Christ is doing. And it goes all the way through to the crucifixion. It's, it is a passion play. Okay. Um, there is no resurrection in it because what Weber wanted you to do was believe that Christ was resurrected and that he lives in you. And that's what Weber was after. Now we're going to hear a song, so set it up for us. Okay, well, we're going to see where, um, uh, some of Laura Torres' uh, fantastic choreography. We have a clip from Herod. Let's watch this clip. Okay. Now I understand your God. 
JR, that was absolutely wonderful. If anyone in Alpena misses Jesus Christ Superstar, it's going to be a great miss in the season. So when can we come to Thunder Bay Theater to see it? We open on March 29th. Okay. Uh, and we're only, it's a strange schedule. So uh, the first week, since it's Easter weekend, okay. we run Friday and Saturday. Okay, not Easter Sunday. Not Easter Sunday. Okay. The next week, we run Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the week after that, we run Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. So, so we have lots of opportunity to get there and see it. Thank you so much. I'm looking oh, forward to it. thank you for having us. Thank you. It's going to be great. I'll be right back, excuse me, with some information from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Sarah Waters, who is the Education Coordinator for Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Sure, I'm happy to. And we want to talk today about the ROV, Remote Operated Vehicles, because as we were talking before we started, it's, it's science, it's math, it's engineering, it's all rolled into fun, but they're going to learn so much. Absolutely. There's definitely a lot of fun and excitement, but it hits all of those great learning opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math. And the students really, uh, they get some technical knowledge as they're building the robots, uh, but they also get to problem solve. Uh, test out their critical thinking skills and definitely get experience working as a team which is a big one too. And this is something that students, um, classes, people do year-round now. Absolutely. Um, the, the competition has grown a lot in the last few years and uh, many students work year-round on tangent projects or their vehicles uh, for the competition and then they might take their robots out into Thunder Bay River or Lake Huron and use the robots to explore their own watersheds. Ah, very good. Yeah. Now, um, you just opened up registration for the competition and you already have 20 people signed up and it just opened two days ago. That's right. We're really, people were chomping at the bit to, to get signed up because we can only accommodate about 32 teams uh, during the competition day and uh, 10 of the teams signed up are from the Alpena area, so we're really excited about that. Uh, and the rest of the teams come from as far as uh, Ohio, uh, Traverse City, Sterling Heights. We have a new team coming from Frankfurt this Ooh, year. Oh, very good. Um, so it's a great opportunity for those students to mix and see what everybody else is doing around the state and uh, share the opportunity together. I know that we're going to we're seeing some um, some video and some images. So you have some images from last year's competition. So what does a day at competition look like? Well, so this is a great montage for people to get a sense of what they might see if they showed up. It's definitely a public event. We want people to come and see these robots the students made um, and see them at work at the plaza pool. And um, you can see that they take different shapes. Uh, there's really uh, no parameters as far as uh, what the vehicle could look like. Uh, they do have to um, adhere to certain safety standards, of course, but outside of that, it allows for a lot of creativity and what kind of tools they add to their vehicle ah. to get the job done. And now you actually have some 4-H classes that are doing ROV as their project. Absolutely. 4-H um, uh, leaders from around northern Michigan uh, attended a workshop in January at the Marine Sanctuary. They learned how to build robots themselves and they're going out and starting after school clubs through 4-H to help um, advance those science, technology, engineering, and math schools through 4-H. So students that are interested in forming an after school club should find their local 4-H leader and yes. ask about it. And now the day of competition, which we need to say when that is. Yes, that's April 20th this okay. year. So Saturday, April 20th uh, is the competition. It's held again at uh, Alpena County Plaza Pool and Alpena High School. Um, we're not just in the pool, but um, the students also uh, give engineering presentations. So ah. they'll uh, talk about how and why they built their vehicle. And uh, so visitors can see the posters they made to explain their vehicle and their team, um, as well as talk to the students directly. And we, let, we need to let people know we're, they're encouraged to come and watch this competition. It's unbelievable to see what these young people, the young students in our community are building, doing, operating, the task that they have to be able to do. And as you said, the problem solving is something doesn't work, hurry up and try to get it fixed and figure out what's going on so you can get back in the competition. That's right. We want people to come. Uh, we definitely, if folks are interested in volunteering, they can contact Ooh, the Marine okay. Sanctuary to do that as well. But um, if you just want to stop by at some point in the day, the competition starts at 9 a.m. and goes right through to the awards ceremony at 4 o'clock. 
and uh, it's really a great opportunity for students to see career pathways as well. Yes. They, uh, the mission each year is based on a real world scenario, so what are robots really doing out there in the Great Lakes and the oceans? And uh, it shows students that, hey, this is a career I might be able to follow. And uh, so we're really excited to have uh, Alpena Community College this year yes. as a co-host for the event. Um, a great alignment because they have the new marine technology program. Uh, so again, a way for students to see a career pathway in uh, marine technology. And guess what? They could even take their classes right here at Alpena Community College. That's, it's an amazing, and I'm just, I know Jeff and I talk about this all the time since the sanctuary came to our area, what's happened. And as you mentioned, the people coming from all over, you know, what a wonderful boost to our economy in April. All these people coming to town, staying in hotels, eating food, buying gas, going shopping. You know, it's a wonderful thing. So I'd like to have our community support it too and thank everyone for coming and the Marine Sanctuary in general for hosting this wonderful competition. Our pleasure. It's uh, one of the highlights of my year. It's so fun to see uh, these students excel and demonstrate their abilities for everybody to enjoy. And you can go online to your website too because I know you have some information on it also and some I saw last time some photographs and things of the ROV, so. Yeah, we have a whole page that explains the competition and the mission this year and all the details if you want to get started with your own team or volunteer or just stop by for the day and check it out. Okay, so what other wonderful projects are you working on for spring and summer? <laughs> Oh, we've got lots of things happening. Um, we're going to have an Earth Day celebration for students mm -hmm. coming up in April, so that's right after the ROV competition. Okay. Um, and we're looking forward to some uh, new exhibits this summer. Uh, we'll be hosting an exhibit from the Smithsonian Institution called Journey Stories, so Ooh. we're very excited about that. And uh, we're also partnering up um, this year for a first annual Youth Watershed Summit. Wow. So some of these students, as I mentioned, take their ROVs uh, after the competition or before the competition and use them to take a look at the Thunder Bay River and other parts of the watershed in the community. And um, we at ACC, um, those students are going to come together and share what they've done throughout this year, uh, watershed related projects. So we're very excited for that. Okay. And then, of course, the uh, the glass bottom boats will be back out and that's all the other fun stuff. That's right. Ticketing uh, will be up probably next week for the glass bottom boat. We've had some folks Ooh, already, stopping by yeah. already wanting to know when they can get their tickets this year. So. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for being here. Once again, please tell us the date of the competition. The uh, annual Great Lakes Regional Mate ROV competition will be April 20th. Okay, Saturday, April 20th, mm -hmm. Alpena County Plaza Pool. You can check out the website for more details, and please come and see what the kids in our state of Michigan and outside are doing. Unbelievable things with math, science, technology, engineering. Um, unbelievable. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Pleasure. Please stay tuned for Dr. Olin Joint and following these messages. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Olin Joynton, president of Alpena Community College, and I guess this morning, Mr. Brian Van Warmer of ESI. Welcome to the show, Brian. Good morning, Dr. Joynton. Thanks for having me this morning. You're welcome. How about a little bit about you first? Uh, I believe you grew up in Alpena. I did. Um, born and raised here in Alpena. Um, went through the Alpena Public Schools, Alpena High School, um, Alpena Community College. Um, and then went to Northern Michigan University. And majored in? Uh, business Administration, uh, uh, Human Resource Management. And then I think you told me you came right back to Alpena and uh, found your uh, career in ESI? I did. Um, upon graduation, I moved back to the area and uh, began working um, at Omni Metalcraft for a couple of years and uh, took a position at ESI. Very good. Well, what does ESI stand for and what is ESI all about? Uh, ESI is Employment Services Incorporated. Um, ESI is really in the business of helping to match uh, talented people with opportunities. Um, employment Services, everything from recruiting um, to um, personnel type matters um, for the clients that we work with. Very good. Now, you mentioned talented people. Is, is there some formula of ingredients that you uh, try to identify for talent or does it vary all over the map? 
Well, you know, I think it varies. Um, we look at uh, really three parts, knowledge, skill, and talent. Um, knowledge and skill are things that, you know, folks acquire over time. Um, talent, I, I think, is something that you either have or you don't. Um, everybody has their own talents. Um, we look for those with talents that match up well with the needs that we have for career opportunities. Well, what's it like out there as far as matching up uh, openings and opportunities for people with talent who want to work? Uh, versus the number of positions and types of positions that are available out there? I think right now um, we are seeing a, a shortage of, of talented folks in, in certain areas. Um, some of those would be uh, computer-aided drafting and design, uh, folks using SolidWorks. Um, uh, we also see a, a shortage of mechanical engineers. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there are opportunities out there uh, right now I think there, there's a shortage of, uh, of those folks, and it, it may not be a shortage more so. It, it is a lack of um, promotion about those opportunities. So really, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, the STEM subjects, uh, so-called, are, um, from your perspective, uh, very much in demand. Uh, absolutely. And that's what a lot of our educational leaders are uh, emphasizing. Um, so for the audience out there, if you're wondering uh, what to go into or what to study, whether you're just still in high school or you're looking for a new career, maybe you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s, uh, as we often have people come into ACC at uh, those ages, mm -hmm. um, the subjects you mentioned and the ones that are similar to them uh, would be good, good opportunities. Yeah, I would say your, your pre-engineering, your, your drafting and design, um, manufacturing technology, um, you know, really, really the math and science um, and mechanical uh, fields. Um, and not, you know, we also see a need for highly skilled manufacturing as well. Good. So Good. Um, now, you have started a program. It was really your initiative coming to me uh, to kind of set up shop at Alpena Community College. Um, why don't you tell the audience about that? Yeah, our, uh, our plan was you know, to spend one day a week in the, uh, the Career Services Center, the Student Services Center at ACC. Um, use that one day a week to either make appointments for students or to have an open door um, where students could come in and learn about career opportunities locally um, with the clients that I represent um, and also it was an opportunity to, to talk to students about the types of, of opportunities there are um, and, and where we see the needs going forward. Um, part of being there though also allows me to provide um, some some knowledge and experience to students with regard to uh, interviewing, interviewing tips and, and things to do uh, in preparation for interviews, um, as well as, you know, reviewing resumes and um, had a number of students that have come in and, and said, hey, I have had an interview. Um, I don't think it went as well as it could have. What things could I do better? And so I've taken that time to, to work with them on those things. Very good. So you mentioned a number of things uh, that a person can uh, pursue and acquire uh, knowledge and skills uh, to add to whatever their talent strength is, um, and also interviewing skills. What, what other things uh, should people keep in mind who are looking for employment? I would say the biggest thing is to network. Um, you know, talk to folks in business, um, talk to people in, in, that are, are business owners or um, people that you know have been successful in business. I think there are opportunities out there, um, they just aren't publicized maybe the way that they used to be, um, both with social media, um, you know, just, I, I use the example because something isn't advertised uh, in the newspaper or something like that doesn't mean the opportunities aren't there. Right. I would say most opportunities get filled by, by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And so the more people that you can network with and talk to, the, the greater your, your potential for, for landing that opportunity. So don't sit at home by yourself and uh, uh, just uh, read sources that might appear in the paper, although those are good. Uh, we love our newspaper, mm -hmm. but uh, there are other opportunities to get out and meet people and hear about possibilities and get leads and that sort of thing. You know, it's being proactive. Absolutely, you know, pound the pavement, you know, yeah. do, it, do what it takes to sell yourself and, and find those opportunities. Uh, I've also heard from employers in the region uh, just kind of selling yourself, showing up on time, uh, dressing appropriately, using appropriate language, showing, you know, etiquette and, and manners and 
and, and courtesies go a long way towards making uh, 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 an applicant attractive to an employer. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, I, I, tell, I tell students, I tell folks when, when the interview is typically complete, um, you know, you want to put your best foot forward. First impression is, is huge, and the more time and preparation you put into making that first impression uh, a worthwhile experience for you and the potential employer, the greater chance you have of, of landing that opportunity. That's interesting. I was told by one person uh, helping to get me ready for the interview that I had to be president at Alpena Community College. A uh, person said, Olin, it'll be all over in the first 10 seconds uh, when you enter the room and people are looking at you and seeing you for the first time. And uh, they'll either like what they see <laughs> and it'll go well or, or not. And, and so, uh, that, that's pretty interesting. One other topic, uh, not to dwell on a negative, but I hear from a number of employers, they encounter applicants or prospects who would be uh, everything they could ask for except they can't pass the drug tests. And so I would imagine you'd want to echo the sentiment uh, uh, how important it is uh, to, to make sure you're not having problems like that, or if you do, get help. Yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, I, I think a drug test is pretty self-explanatory, you know, in, in today's job market with the number of folks that are competing for jobs. Um, I think, you know, anybody that's out looking for work um, should be taking steps and preparing themselves for what a career would look like. And, right. And with the, 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 the risks and liabilities associated with those types of behaviors, um, you know, they're, they're just not tolerated in the workplace. Well, thank you very much for being my guest this morning. You've given great information for the audience, people looking for work, and uh, uh, I wish you every success in uh, ESI. Uh, your leadership is really good there. Thanks, Dr. Joyton. This has been Talk of the Town with Nancy Smitham and Dr. Olin Joynton. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on Community. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.